Many people don't know, there is a front to distributors. Well, hey, PW Bruce here. Um, what we're going to do today is install our distributor, but many people don't know, there is a front to distributors. And I'm going to show you how to find out the front of your distributor. So we're going to do it. First thing we're going to do is pop the cap. Pull that guy off. And then we're going to pull the rotor off. It's the rotor there because that rotates. There's that. Pull this little beautiful plastic protector off. Okay. Now, right at the tip of my fingertip, there's a little notch. That's the front of the distributor. All Bosch distributors are marked this way. And when we insert this into our engine here, this mark will face this way. Okay, so we got our notch in the front, and we put it back together. Distributor shaft is notched, so is the rotor. Can only go on one way, really. And the cap is also notched. Right where my thumb is. And that goes in the cutout over there. And then once it's on, it's not going to go anywhere. So I just flip it back up. Okay, so part two of our little distributor thingy here is we're going to insert it into the car, well, into the engine block. So uh, what I want to do is uh, lube up this shaft here a little bit and the drive dog on the bottom. I'll just smear some grease. This is normally this area here, the drive dog is lubricated splash lubricated by the crankcase oil during the uh, operation of the engine. And the O-ring here keeps the oil from shooting out. And what are you using for this? Oh, we're using our Stay Lube Molly Grease with molybdenum disulfide additive. Stay Lube. There we are. Oh, there we are. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Okay, now I got the shaft of the distributor done pretty good. Oh, by the way, I've already put on my bracket, the locking bracket. So we're going to pull this shop towel here out of the port. For the distributor here in the crankcase, and then I want to clean my finger, so to speak, of the grease here, but running it down in there a little bit because this is where the, this guy goes. Now I want to point out here that your engine needs to be set to top dead center for number one, right here. And once your number one's on here, and I mentioned about the front of the distributor, so all that's going to fall into place here as we put this little puppy in. And away we go. Actually, what I'm going to do here... Let's pop this 
and then I can rotate the um, rotate the um, <laughs> the rotor, and that'll help it seat better. Okay, so she's in now. This is number one, and it won't it won't turn because the drive shaft is now engaged to the drive shaft in the engine. Okay, so we're looking good there. And in addition, here our <coughs> our bracket mounting bracket here is seated itself. Uh, we do have a lock nut and wave washer for that. This is 13 millimeter back here, by the way. Now, up here in the front, these, this is a 10 millimeter, and this locks the bracket once the timing is set. And you rotate your distributor, I'll show you how this is done. Uh, setting the timing is the third step, but that's down the road here, quite a bit here yet, is that you rotate yeah, I'm rotating the distributor. The whole distributor I'm I'm rotating, but the rotor does not turn. So this is how timing is set. Either rot either retarding the timing or advancing the timing timing. And this would be done with the engine at uh, idle with a strobe light. You can also tie up time these uh, statically with the engine not running, just with the ignition switch on and then once the light comes on you're timed. So that's how the timing is done on these, which we will do in the future. But it's been installed and another way to test yourself <clears throat> to make sure that the front of the distributor is in fact in the front is the vacuum unit here will always face out toward the back here. This vacuum unit should never be way back in here or anything like that. Okay. And I'm going to put this little wave washer on here. And lock nut on the bracket. What's it look like? Oh, well, this is what a wave washer looks like. Could they have a little wavy to them? And then they flatten out once you. Um... Okay. okay. And you just feed it and start it. And there we go. You just finger tighten it for right now. There we go, just like that. We'll get a 13 millimeter on that a little later. I don't have one handy, but I did want to point out, so this is our vacuum line. It's been refurbished nicely by my bride. New vacuum hose on each end. Well, this guy here goes on the vacuum unit of the distributor. Just a nice little pressy fit on. And over here on the carburetor, we have a little plug here on the vacuum line. So we'll pull this little plug right off. Like that there. I'm going to save that. I'm going to save that guy because it's hard, hard to find these. <laughs> they do come in handy. I'll just put that there. Okay, and then this side of the vacuum line goes right here on the vacuum line of the carburetor. Our carburetor and our distributor, our time period 
for 69 and it's looking more every day. The only other thing we have to do is plug wires. I'm sure you all know how to do that. VW's fire one four three two, but when you're running backwards, like when you're adjusting your valves, then it's one two three four. Now, why is it shaped like that? The vacuum line is shaped like this because um, you need the right amount of vacuum going into it at the right speed. I've been told by the pros. I used to run in the old days when I was a kid, just run this line here and I just ran it straight up. I eliminated this metal part here and I was at a show and a gentleman asked me why I did that and I said, well, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And he said, well, they're shaped for, for a reason because of the, uh, the vacuum that needs to run properly at all the different speeds. And that's why VW went to great lengths actually to, to shape it like this. In the early days, some of these are curly Q. There's one that kind of just went up and went over, uh, and it eventually came to this. That this is historic. This is almost a historic icon. This little guy, and you see these at swap meets a dime a dozen because nobody ever runs these, but we're doing it because it's time period. All right. Okay, and then uh, the electrical connection, besides these big plug wires, is the center wire, that's the high tension wire. This is the one that's carrying 25,000 volts coming from the center of the coil to the center of the distributor. The only other connection from the distributor is the 12 volt primary coming from the condenser. And it goes up, <laughs> come on buddy, it goes right up here and hooks right there. You got your choice. You could hook it in the back, hook it in the front. There it is. Nice. Happy Farfrick Nugan. Meet me. like our videos, hit share, click like, and ring that bell. Bing.